So far in our parade of packages, we've been covering things like how to install other packages, see their contents, edit them, figure out when you've edited them, and configure them to your own liking. It's time to move off in another direction and cover packages that actually add Sublime Text functionality that makes your everyday working life a little bit easier. If you're like me and a lot of other developers, you like to edit multiple files at the same time and be able to visualize them on the screen. If that's the case, you may be interested in a little package called Origami. Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odat Nerd here. Welcome to this video on Origami. Before we get into that, though, as always, a reminder that if you are finding these videos in any way useful or helpful, please use those buttons down below the video to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate. If you have any questions or comments on the content of this video, any of the videos on the channel, or other suggestions for Sublime Text topics you'd like me to cover, including other packages you'd like me to showcase, you can drop those in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. The topic of today's video, though, is Origami, which is a package that makes it a little bit easier to work with groups of files and side-by-side -side editing in Sublime Text. Now, of course, as we're all aware, when you start up Sublime, you get a window with a single group of files in it, and there are some predetermined window layouts you can easily switch between. For example, there's a single column layout. You can have a two column layout. You could even have a three column layout if that's what you want. Perhaps you want to have two rows, uh, even three rows of files, or you might be interested in having four uh, files open at the same time in a two row, two column configuration. And what if you wanted to actually have a more complex window layout? Now, the options that I was just using there are available down here in the view layout menu, where there are some predefined window layouts for you. As you can see, single columns up to four columns, two or three rows, and that grid of four. Now, each one of those layouts refers to one or more groups of files. The default layout is the single uh, group, which is what is there by default. And using the options in the group menu, you can move files around between groups, create groups, and do things of that nature, including sending the keyboard focus to the next or previous group or using a keyboard shortcut to focus them directly. There'll be one of those shortcuts for every group that is currently available, as well as moving files between groups. And these are pretty handy, but when it comes to layouts, there are some layouts that are you might want to use, but it's not possible to get directly from this menu of items right here. Now, as it turns out, the layout system in Sublime is quite sophisticated and can have any number of rows and columns split in any way you want, as long as you can configure it the way that you want. And the easiest way to do that is to use a package called Origami. Now, of course, when we're interested in finding a new Sublime Text package, we would use the Discover Packages command, package control command from the command palette, which opens up the package control website in your web browser and allows you to search. And we can search for origami and see that there is a package named that here. And we'll click in and see that, again, this is one of those very popular packages that has been around for a while. Now, I say this in every video of this kind. You should read the README of a package. It's going to have some level of information in there on how to configure a package or how to get the most use out of it. And I usually skip away from them because that's something that you should just always be doing. But really want to suggest that you do that for origami because although it's simple to work with, there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts. And if we look at this information here, we can see the keyboard options in origami work via key chords. That is, you press one key binding followed by a second one to provide the actual functionality. And in origami, the first key binding is Control K on Windows and Linux or Command K on Mac OS, followed by one of the arrow keys. And the modifiers that you provide to the arrow keys determine what's going to happen, whether the focus moves to a group or moves a file to a group and so on. So you're going to want to take a quick peek at that information that uh, on those key bindings. The more of them you use and the more 
ones you use the most often, you'll be able to commit those to memory. All the commands are also available in the command palette as well. So we're going to switch back over to Sublime. And I'm going to say install package, and the package that we're going to install is origami, like so. And we'll see again when we install origami. It's one of those packages that displays package control messages, and one of the messages that it provides is the key bindings that allow you to... Uh, do what you want to do and it again goes over how you press control or command k then an arrow to move the focus or shift and an arrow to move the current file to the direction that you indicate with the arrow keys and so on these options are also available in the view menu under origami there's the commands for working with panes which is the origami term for groups of files, including creating new panes above, below, to the right or left of the current pane, moving the cursor to one of those, destroying one of them, and also creating new files in a direction, moving the current file in a direction, creating a clone, pulling a file from another pane into the current one, and options for the window, which involve saving and restoring layouts, but we'll cover that in just a moment. These commands are also available in the command palette under origami. So again, if for the commands that you use on a regular basis, your fingers will just automatically remember the key bindings that you want. And for others, the ones that you don't use that often, you can use the command palette to find those commands. Let's go ahead and close the package control messages now. One thing to keep in mind is that when you use a command uh, that moves the cursor or a file from one direction to another, like say moving the cursor to a pane on the right or cloning a file to the right and things of that nature, if there's not already a pane in that direction, you will automatically create one by using that command. So. Whereas the standard Sublime Text layout for two columns suggests that you use the uh, key binding for that to just automatically create two columns uh, such as that, in Origami you would press Control K and then tap the right arrow because you want to move to the right and we now have a pane on the right and we can go back to the left and go back to the right by pressing control K and one of those arrow keys. Now one thing that you might want to do is have multiple rows of items within a column. This isn't something that's not particularly easy to pull off with the standard sublime commands but here by saying I want to move to a pane down from this one it will automatically create such a pane for me and if I want to I can of course jump back over to the left and if I wanted to I could create a pane below here as well. All of these options very easy to use. Now let's say we actually had some sort of file here and we wanted to shift this file into the rightmost column because we'll see if I use just control K and the right arrow what it's actually doing is moving the cursor there which is not what I want to do here. I want to actually move this file or shift this file into that pane. So to do that, I would press Control K and then hold down Shift when I press the arrow key, and that causes the file to jump over to that pane. And similarly, I can use the same key binding to hop it back to the left by using the left arrow with Shift instead of the right arrow. Sometimes you want to be able to destroy the pane on a particular direction as well. Now. Generally, this isn't something I do super often, so this is a case where I would come to the command palette and find the destroy option and say that I want to destroy the pane on the right, which I can see as control K and control shift right, and that will do that for me. So if I was to create a new pane to the right, move back to the left, and then press control K, control shift right arrow, that does that for me as well. You may also want to create a clone of one file into another layout, and you can do that by holding down the Alt key when you use the arrow key. So in that case, if I wanted to clone this file below the current file, I would press Control-K, then hold down Alt and press the down arrow, and now I have cloned that view. So I have two tabs open with the exact same file content, and that means whenever you change one, you change all of the clones as well. We can go ahead and jump that back to a single column and have both of those clones there. Let's go ahead and close those now. Now let's say you actually want to go to a, you have a file again, 
such as this, and you want a pane on the right to do something with, but you don't want to move the cursor there. What we've been doing up until now is telling origami that we want to move to a pane on the right, and because there isn't one there, it creates that pane and then moves into that pane. But if you wanted to create a pane, or a again, that's a group in Sublime Text Parlance, uh, you would can use the control key with the arrow key. So in that case, if we wanted to create a pane on the right of the current one, but leave the cursor where it is, we would press control K, then hold down control and press the right arrow. And now we have that pane on the right. We're going to go ahead and swap that back to one item and close this file now. Now, again, as I said, you know, how you use these particular options depends on how you like to work. And sometimes you may just want a simple two column arrangement such as this one. Now, the way that I like to work, and if you watch my live streams on my alternate channel, which is linked in the description of this video, there's a certain layout of files of, sorry, there's a certain layout of groups I use when I'm working. And that is, I like to have two columns such as this, but I also like to have one item down below. And in the left-hand side of the window is the main file I'm working in. On the right top-hand part of the uh, window is the file that I'm sort of referring to. For example, if I'm working on a library and code that uses that library, one of those files is open in one pane and one of those files is open in the other. The one I'm working on most prominently would be on the left because it has more space dedicated to it. But sometimes you do want to be able to see, you know, the, the methods in your library as you're calling them or things like that. And I like to have a pane in the bottom right of the window for notes. Now, note also that if you wanted to change the size of one of these panes, you can do that by using the mouse and dragging such as this. And again, you can do that on all of these splits to set these the way that you want. Now, if you're like me and you like working without having to take your hands off the keyboard, Origami allows you to resize these as well. By pressing Control K and then Control C, we'll see down at the bottom, it's telling me what the column split is. And right now it's 0.4. It's what percentage. And I could say 0.25 in here. And we'll see that the left column is a quarter of the screen. And the other side is three quarters of the screen. So maybe I want that to be a 0.5 like so. So that's a nice even split. That's working pretty nicely. Now, if I want to modify the row layout, you can do the same thing by pressing Control K, Control R. And of course, these key bindings would be uh, slightly different on Mac OS. They would use the command key for a lot of these. That's why you should read the README. And we can see here that it's set to 0.5, which is telling me that these rows are both set to be exactly half. But if I want wanted that bottom column to be uh, a different size, then I could go ahead and say I want, say, perhaps 0 0.75 uh, to have more on the top and just a few lines of notes down in the bottom of the window. Or maybe uh, a 0.6 is where it's at to get a little bit more. Now that I have this window layout set up the way that I like it, I can go ahead and go into the command palette and say, save current layout. And it's going to ask me what I want this to be. And I might call this one by two work with notes, for example, and hit the key. Now, there's a couple of things that I can do here. One, if I was in the standard single pane layout, I could come into here and say restore saved layout. And it's going to show me a list of all the layouts I saved. I could say I want the one by two work with notes. And as soon as I hit it, the window layout is just immediately applied. Alternatively, you might want to say new window from saved layout. And in that case, again, it's going to ask you. And when you hit it, you get a new window with that layout in it. Now, it's also worth noting that these commands, they're not special. They're just standard package commands. So if there are layouts that you like to use, you could bind them to a key binding. You could add them to the menu the same way as the uh, existing items are already there. These sorts of things are what makes Sublime Text such a joy to work with. You can really customize it to the way that you like to work. So that's just a quick whirlwind tour of origami. As I said in the introduction, you may not necessarily need it because there are some options built into Sublime, but depending on your window layout preferences, 
and the way you want to work, this can really make your life a whole lot easier. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you found this video in any way useful or helpful, please use those buttons down below to thumb, subscribe, and share as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions or comments on the content of this video or any of my videos or suggestions for other videos you'd like me to make, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at OdatNerd. Until the next video in the package parade, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.